8. Business life insurance. Businesses may use life insurance to accomplish a number of different objectives, such as Black Small Square protecting the business from the death of a key employee or shareholder, Black Small Square funding a buy sell agreement, Black Small Square providing additional compensation for highly valued employees. 8.1 Potential impacts of death on a business While death is most often thought of as a personal or family tragedy, the fact is that death can have a significant impact on some businesses, particularly in the case of small businesses or startup companies. The agent must understand the structure of his client's business in order to advise him from an insurance perspective. A business may have to face a number of issues when a death occurs, black small square loss of skills, black small square creditor demands, black small square family interference, black small square equality for family members, black small square capital gains tax. 8.1.1 Loss of skills Some companies have one single person, or a handful of people, who are integral to the success of the business. These are people who are integral to the business and who are not easily replaced. Such a person is referred to as a key person or key employee. A key person can be one of the following. Black Small Square A highly skilled craftsman. Black Small Square An entrepreneurial genius. Black Small Square An influential vice president. Black Small Square A charismatic salesperson. Black Small Square An engineer with a particular expertise for the running of a factory. If a key person dies, the business loses skills that are vital to the continued viability of the company. This may result in lower production or decreased quality of goods or services, higher expenses and reduced profit margins, reduced consumer confidence and lower revenues. Example Monica is a talented architect who works for a company specialized in the design of professional offices for lawyers and surgical specialists. The owners of the firm believe that about 30% of their business is due to the clients that specifically seek out Monica's talents. Monica's death would have a significant impact on the company's revenue. 8.1.2 Creditor Demands Many business loans take the form of demand loans, which have no fixed term or set duration of repayment as long as interest is paid. The borrower can also repay a demand loan in full at any time without penalty. However, the lender can generally recall the loan, demanding repayment in full, as long as any notice requirements specified in the loan agreement are met. If a business has significant debt and a key person dies, creditors can become nervous and may recall demand loans or refuse to extend additional credit if the company needs it. Example Cooper was the senior sales director for an advertising firm, and he has just died. Before his death, he was responsible for bringing in about 50% of the firm's new business. The company recently took out a $500,000 demand loan to completely revamp their IT infrastructure to allow them to develop new holographic ads. They were relying on Cooper to drive the sales needed to pay back the loan. However, when the bank heard about Cooper's death and saw the company's latest sales figures, they recalled the loan and demanded repayment in full. 8.1.3 Family Member Interference when a business has multiple owners and one of them dies, problems may arise if the deceased left his interest in the business to his surviving spouse or children. Often, the beneficiary is not capable or is incompatible with the surviving business owners. Even where the beneficiary is willing to sell his share in the business to the surviving owners, he could demand an unreasonable price for that share. Example Jason, Ivan and Connor were the joint owners of Restful Solutions, a funeral home that caters to the upper class of society. Jason died without a will and he was survived only by Mason, his 24-year-old son. Mason is a troubled young adult with a history of petty theft and drug use. Mason inherited Jason's ownership interest in Restful Solutions. He showed up drunk at the funeral home shortly after his father's death, and loudly announced his intention to take over his father's role in the business. When Ivan and Connor tried to tell him that it was not a suitable role for him, he demanded $1,200,000 for his share in the business. This problem, and how it can be addressed, is discussed in more detail in the section by sell agreements. 8.1.4 Equality for Family Members 
Parents desire to treat their children equally, however, they must remind themselves that equally means fairly, which is different from exactly the same. This applies to many aspects of life, but is especially important when doing succession planning for a family business. In many cases, one child may have the interest and aptitude for taking over the family business, but another child may have completely different talents and aspirations. The parents will have to be creative in their estate planning to treat both children fairly. Example Christina is the sole owner of a very successful garden center, Hibiscus, which is an incorporated company worth about $1.5 million. Christina has two children who are in their 20s, Harry shares his mother's passion for gardening and has worked at the garden center since the age of 10. Nancy is a doctor and has never had any interest in the business. Christina would love for Harry to carry on the business if she dies, but she worries about treating Nancy fairly. Christina's other assets are limited to about $400,000, and she feels it would be unfair to leave the business to Harry while only leaving $400,000 to Nancy. 8.1.5 Capital Gains Tax When a Canadian taxpayer dies, he is deemed to have disposed of all of his property for its fair market value immediately prior to death unless a spousal rollover applies. In the case of shares in an active and prosperous business, this can result in a significant taxable capital gain if the shares are left to anyone other than his surviving spouse. If there is not enough money in his estate to pay this tax, it can force the executor 27 to sell some of the shares just to pay the tax. Example Lori owns a 20% interest in a business corporation that she wants to pass on to her daughter, Olivia, when she dies. The shares currently have an adjusted cost base, ACB, of $100,000 and a fair market value, FMV, of $600,000, so if she dies today, this would result in a taxable capital gain of $250,000, calculated as $600,000 to $100,000, times 50%. If her marginal tax rate is 50%, this would result in an income tax liability of $125,000. If her estate cannot pay that income tax, and her daughter cannot either, then her executor would be forced to sell some of the shares to pay the tax bill. This will be explored further in the section corporations. This will be explored further in the section corporations. 8.2 Business Types the challenges faced by a business upon the death of the owner or a key employee depend in part on whether the business is structured as a sole proprietorship, partnership or corporation. The types of business are addressed below. Black Small Square Sole Proprietorship Black Small Square Partnerships Black Small Square Corporations 8.2.1 Sole Proprietorship a sole proprietorship is an unincorporated business that is owned by a single person. A sole proprietorship is usually operated by the sole proprietor, so obviously the death of the sole proprietor could have a catastrophic impact on the business. As with any business, a sole proprietorship could also have one or more employees who are key to the success of the business, such that their death could be detrimental to the business. From a tax and legal perspective, there is no legal separation between the business and the owner, they are considered to be the same entity. A sole proprietor reports the net income of the business on his personal tax return, and he is personally responsible for any business debts or other obligations. The business is not a separate entity that can be bought or sold, or bequeathed to another person upon death, and the business itself does not have an adjusted cost base. However, the assets of the business, including inventory, buildings, etc., would form part of the sole proprietor's estate and would be subject to the deemed disposition rules upon death. 8.2.2 Partnerships A partnership is a business that is owned by two or more people who have the common purpose of earning a profit. In many cases, the partners are actively involved in the business and their death could be detrimental to the business. However, a partner can also be a passive or silent partner, meaning that he contributed capital to the partnership and shares in the earnings, but he does not take an active role in the business. From a tax perspective, each partner must report his share of the net partnership income on his personal tax return. 
Each partner is also jointly and severally liable for all of the debts or obligations of the business, unless the partnership is a limited partnership. A limited partner is entitled to share in the partnership's profits, but is not personally responsible for the business's debts or other obligations. A limited partnership must always have at least one general partner, who is personally liable for the business's debts and obligations. Unlike a sole proprietorship, a partnership interest can be bought, sold or bequeathed upon death. It has an adjusted cost base, and a capital gain or loss can be triggered upon the sale or the deemed disposition upon death. The resulting tax liability can be significant and can potentially destroy the business if it is not carefully planned for. 8.2.3 Corporations A corporation is a legal entity that is separate and distinct from its owners also called shareholders. The shareholders are not personally liable for the business's debts or obligations unless they personally guaranteed those debts. If they are directors of the corporation, they can be held personally responsible for the company's income taxes and any amounts they deduct at source from payroll, example, employee income tax withholdings, Canada Pension Plan, CPP, and Employment Insurance, EI, contributions. The corporation's shareholders do not report the company's net income directly on their personal tax returns, instead, that net income is taxed in the corporation. After tax profits either increase the corporation's share value or are paid out to the shareholders in the form of dividends. Shares in the corporation have an adjusted cost base, and the sale or deemed disposition upon death can result in capital gains or losses. As with a partnership, the resulting tax liability can be significant and can potentially destroy the business if it is not carefully planned for. 8.2.3.1 Public versus Private Corporations There are some significant differences in the tax rules that apply to public and certain private corporations. A public corporation is generally any incorporated company that is listed on a public stock exchange, while the shares of a private corporation are not traded publicly. There is a subset of private corporations, known as Canadian Controlled Private Corporations, CCPC. A CCPC is a corporation that has the following characteristics. Black Small Square It is not listed on a public stock exchange. Black Small Square It is resident in Canada. Black Small Square It is not controlled, directly or indirectly, by one or more non-resident persons. Black Small Square It is not controlled, directly or indirectly, by one or more public corporations. Corporations 8.2.3.2 Capital Gains Exemption For the purpose of this module, the most important tax attribute of a CCPC is that, upon actual or deemed disposition, the shares may 28th be eligible for the Lifetime Capital Gains Exemption, LCGE. The LCGE for a CCPC is $892,218 for 2021 and is indexed annually for inflation. A taxpayer can use the LCGE to eliminate or offset capital gains realized upon the disposition of qualified shares in a CCPC, a family farm, or a family fishing business. Point 29. 8.3 Key Person Life Insurance If a business owner or employee is important to the success of the business, the business may want to buy key person life insurance on that individual. If the key person dies, the company would receive the death benefit tax-free and could use it to help the business survive by Black Small Square recruiting and training a replacement, Black Small Square making up for lost revenue, Black Small Square covering overhead expenses until the company gets back on its feet. 8.3.1 Split Dollar Arrangements A split dollar life insurance arrangement is a method of sharing the attributes and costs of a permanent life insurance policy amongst two or more parties. It is typically used when more than one party requires the benefits that can be provided by a life insurance policy. For example, it might be used where one party needs life insurance protection and the other party is looking for a tax-deferred investment vehicle. In common uses, a life insurance policy could be jointly owned by a key employee and the corporation he works for. The split dollar arrangement can be structured in several ways. For example, the employee could own the death benefit and the corporation could own and control the policy's cash value or vice versa. 
If it is a universal life, UL, policy with a death benefit equal to the face amount plus account value or cumulative premiums, usually the employee is only entitled to control the portion of the death benefit equal to the original face amount, which would be paid to a beneficiary of his choosing upon his death. The corporation would receive the account value portion of the death benefit upon the employee's death. Alternatively, the corporation could own the death benefit up to the original face amount, while the employee owns the policy's cash value and any death benefit in excess of the original face amount. This is the most common arrangement for key person insurance, where the corporation needs the face amount to compensate for the impact that the key person's death would have on the business. The key employee benefits by getting access to a tax-deferred investment vehicle. The employee and the corporation would split the premiums in a way that recognizes their separate economic interests in the policy. In the latter case, where the corporation owns the death benefit up to the face amount, its share of the premiums would be tied to the reasonable costs for comparable term insurance coverage, and the employee would pay the balance of the premiums. 8.3.1.1 Taxation of Key Person Split Dollar Arrangements The Income Tax Act does not contain specific rules dealing with the taxation of split dollar insurance arrangements. However, the Canada Revenue Agency's CRA administrative view appears to be that the premium allocation between the employee and the corporation should reflect the fair market value of their respective interests in the insurance contract. Point 30 for the cost of a death benefit equal to the initial face amount this can be interpreted as the premiums for comparable term coverage. For UL policies, it can be the cost of yearly renewable term, YRT, coverage or even the net cost of pure insurance, NCPI. Upon retirement or termination of employment, the corporation would no longer need the key person coverage and the ownership interest in the death benefit could be transferred to the departing employee. Depending on the fair market value, FMV, of the policy, the transfer might result in a taxable benefit for the employee. If the policy is surrendered, the employee would have to report a policy gain for the difference between the cash surrender value, CSV, and the employee's adjusted cost base, ACB, in the policy. 8.3.2 As a requirement for borrowing If the success of a business depends on the involvement of a key person, a financial institution extending a loan to that business may require the assignment of a life insurance policy on that key person. If the key person dies, the lender would receive that portion of the death benefit required to extinguish the debt. If the business acquires insurance on a key person because the lender requires it, then the business can deduct the premiums, or the net cost of pure insurance in the case of a permanent insurance policy, from its business income. If the death benefit exceeds the outstanding loan, then the deduction for premiums would be prorated accordingly. 8. Point for buy-sell agreements Many businesses that have more than one owner, such as partnerships and private corporations, implement a buy-sell agreement to control what happens if one of the owners dies. A buy-sell agreement usually specifies Black Small Square who has the option or the obligation of buying an owner's interest in the business upon his death. Black Small Square the price that will be paid for that ownership interest, either as a fixed dollar amount, or as a formula, or method to calculate the purchase price. Black Small Square how the purchase will be funded. Buy-sell agreements can also specify how a buyout will be structured if an owner wants to leave the business, retires or becomes disabled. This module, however, only considers how buy-sell agreements might be used upon death. There are several ways that buy-sell agreements can be structured as discussed below. 8.4.1 Cross-Purchase Agreements With a cross-purchase buy-sell agreement, the other owners agree to buy the interest of a deceased owner. For a corporation, this means that the total number of shares outstanding and the value of those shares remain the same, but each surviving shareholder now owns a greater number of shares. Bob, Calvin and Dylan are the three shareholders of a small incorporated business specializing in recycling paper. They each own 100 shares, which are currently worth $10,000 per share. They recently entered into a buy-sell agreement which says that, if any one of them dies, the survivors will buy his shares for their current share value as determined by the company's financial statements. If Bob dies today, this means that Calvin and Dylan will each buy 50 shares from his estate at a price of $10,000 per share. 
Bob's estate will receive a total of $1 million, and Calvin and Dylan will now each own 150 shares. The total number of shares outstanding is still 300, but Calvin and Dylan now have a 50% interest, instead of the 33.33% ownership interest that they had before Bob's death. With a share redemption plan, the corporation redeems the shares of the deceased shareholder. This reduces the number of shares outstanding, but the survivor's ownership interests increase. Example Emily, Fatima and Gloria are the three shareholders of a small incorporated business specializing in health products called Forest Air. They each own 100 shares, which are currently worth $10,000 per share. They recently entered into a buy-sell agreement in the form of a share redemption plan with the company which says that, if any one of them dies, the company will redeem her shares for their current value as determined by the company's financial statements and will cancel shares redeemed by the company of which the total will be 200. If Emily dies today, this means that the company will pay $1 million to her estate. Fatima and Gloria will still own 100 shares each but because the number of outstanding shares will drop to just 200, they will now each have a 50% interest in the company, instead of the 33.33% ownership interest that they had before Emily's death. 8.4.2 Why buy-sell agreements are important Buy-sell agreements are important whenever two or more people own a business together. If one of the business owners dies, a properly funded buy-sell agreement protects the surviving business owners, the business itself, and the surviving family or other beneficiaries of the deceased owner. 8.4.2.1 Guaranteed Buyer One of the problems with small business units or shares is that often they are not very liquid, i.e., they can be hard to sell because there are a limited number of potential buyers. A surviving spouse who inherited small business units or shares from his deceased spouse may find it hard to sell those units or shares unless a buy-sell agreement is in place. Most buy-sell agreements usually specify that the surviving owners or the business must buy the units or shares of a deceased owner. This gives owners the certainty that there will be a buyer for their units or shares upon death. 8.4.2.2 Guaranteed Value Along with guaranteeing a buyer, most buy-sell agreements also specify the sale price, or the method by which the sale price will be calculated. This ensures that the surviving spouse or other beneficiary receives fair compensation for the ownership interest, rather than having to sell it at a deep discount to its true value. 8.4.2.3 Mandatory Sale a buy-sell agreement means that the surviving owners do not have to worry about some unknown person becoming a joint owner in the business. Without a buy-sell agreement in place, an owner could leave his ownership interest to any person of his choosing upon death. This could include his spouse, child or some other person, who may not be capable of running the business or may be incompatible with the surviving owners. With a buy-sell agreement in place, the estate must sell the units or shares to the company itself in a share redemption plan or to the surviving owners in a cross-purchase agreement. 8.4.2. For guaranteed funding through life insurance Perhaps the most important provision of a buy-sell agreement is establishing how the transaction will be funded, because there is no point in mandating a sale at a specific price if the buyer does not have the funds to complete the transaction. The most secure way of funding a buy-sell agreement is through life insurance, as discussed in the sections crisscross insurance and business-owned insurance. Note that the taxation of these arrangements can be quite complex, and agents should refer business owners to a tax or estate planning specialist to determine the structure most appropriate for them. 8.4.3 Crisscross Insurance Crisscross insurance is often used to fund cross-purchase buy-sell agreements. In this arrangement, each party to the buy-sell agreement buys life insurance on the other parties to the agreement, in an amount sufficient to cover their purchase obligation upon that party's death. Recall the earlier example where Bob, Calvin and Dylan each own 100 shares, which are currently worth $10,000 per share. They recently executed a buy-sell agreement which says that, if any one of them dies, the survivors will buy his shares for their current share value as determined by the company's financial statements. The agreement specifies that each associate will purchase life insurance on the lives of the other parties. 
So Bob would buy $500,000 of life insurance on Calvin and Dylan, which would be sufficient to buy 50 shares at the current value of $10,000 per share. Because the insurance is not being used to secure a loan for business or investment purposes, the premiums are not deductible to either the associates or the business. However, the death benefit is tax-free. One of the disadvantages of crisscross insurance is that there may be significant differences in the premiums for the coverage required on each party, depending on their age and health. Example, Kant. Bob is the youngest of the three owners. He is only 32 years old and in excellent health. Dylan, however, is 54 years old, overweight and a smoker, with a history of hypertension. Bob will pay much more for $500,000 of coverage on Dylan's life than Dylan will pay for $500,000 of coverage on Bob's life. Bob doesn't think this is fair, considering the fact that the death benefit is the same for both of them. Dylan, however, maintains that it is fair because Bob is far more likely to collect on the insurance than he is. From a tax perspective, the deceased owner is deemed to have disposed of his business interest for its fair market value, FMV, just prior to death. This will trigger a capital gain on the deceased's final tax return, unless he can shelter some or all of the capital gain with the Lifetime Capital Gains Exemption, LCGE, available for qualifying small business shares. The LCGE for 2021 is $892,218. The surviving associates used the tax-free death benefit they received when the owner died in order to acquire the units or shares from his estate. Jack and Alfred each own 50% of the 200 shares of Jackal Incorporated, a frozen dessert company. They implemented a buy-sell agreement funded with Criss Cross Insurance. Jack died shortly thereafter. The overall process would look like this. 1. Jack and Alfred pay the premiums for life insurance on each other. 2. Jack dies and his 100 shares transfer to his estate. 3. The insurance company pays a tax-free death benefit to Alfred. 4. Alfred pays Jack's estate for his 100 shares. 5. Jack's estate transfers the 100 shares to Alfred, who now owns all 200 shares, or 100% of the company. 8.4 point for, point for business owned insurance. Another option for funding the buy sell agreement is having the business buy the insurance coverage on the business owners. This has several potential advantages over policies purchased by the individual owners. Black small square if the cost of insuring each associate varies significantly due to age and health factors, a business owned option will ensure that the costs are shared equally. Black small square because the associates have access to the company's financial statements, they can assure themselves that the premiums for the insurance are actually being paid. If the policies are owned individually, it may be harder to obtain this proof. Black small square because premiums are generally not tax deductible and are paid with after-tax dollars, it will be cheaper for a corporation to buy the insurance if its tax rate is lower than the personal tax rates of the associates. Black small square if there are more than two associates, it will generally be more efficient and more cost-effective for the business to own policies on each associate, compared to each owner buying individual policies on each of the other associate. Black small square if the buy-sell agreement will be funded by business-owned insurance and there are only two shareholders, a joint first-to-die policy may be appropriate. Business-owned insurance can be used to fund both cross-purchase buy-sell agreements and share redemption plans, as discussed shortly. However, first it is necessary to understand how a capital dividend account works. 8. Dot for dot for dot one role of the capital dividend account, CDA A private corporation uses its capital dividend account, CDA, to record various amounts that it receives on a tax-free basis such as the tax-free 50% of capital gains and some or all of the death benefits received from a life insurance policy. It can then pass those tax-free amounts onto shareholders on the same tax-free basis as a capital dividend point 31. The CDA is only a notional account, which means it does not actually hold funds, it just keeps track of them for tax purposes. It keeps a running balance of the amounts that a private corporation can pay to its shareholders tax-free. A private corporation can elect to designate a payment to its shareholders as a tax-free capital dividend, 
when it has a positive CDA balance and sufficient cash to do so. When the corporation pays out a capital dividend, the CDA balance is reduced by the same amount. Note that only the portion of the death benefit that exceeds the policy's ACB is credited to the CDA and ultimately paid out as a tax-free capital dividend. The remainder, i.e., an amount equal to the policy's ACB, is taxable to the corporation. In the case of a term policy, the ACB is zero, which means that the full death benefit can be credited to the CDA. However, for whole life or UL policies, a portion of the death benefit equal to the policy's ACB is in fact taxable to the corporation. Recall from Section G2 and G3 policies that the ACB of G3 policies tends to grow faster than for G2 policies in the early years, and it takes longer for that ACB to reduce to zero. This ACB pattern is beneficial for individual policyholders who surrender their policies prior to death of the life insured because it reduces their policy gain. However, it is less favorable for corporate-owned policies because a greater portion of the death benefit ends up being taxable. For simplicity, for the remainder of this chapter, we will assume that the corporate-owned insurance is term insurance with an ACB of zero, so the full death benefit can be credited to the corporation's CDA. 8.4.4.2 Funding Cross-Purchase Buy-Sell Agreements If a cross-purchase agreement is funded by corporate-owned insurance, Usually the corporation is named as the beneficiary of the policy. When one of the shareholders dies, the surviving owners purchase the shares from his estate, often using a promissory note. The insurance company will pay the death benefit to the corporation, which will credit the amount to its capital dividend account. The surviving shareholders will then direct the corporation to pay them a capital dividend, which they will use to pay off the promissory note. Example, Kant. Suppose Jack and Alfred's cross-purchase agreement is instead funded by insurance owned by Jackal Incorporated. When Jack died shortly thereafter, the overall process would look like this. 1. Jackal Incorporated pays the premiums for insurance on both Jack and Alfred. 2. Jack dies and his 100 shares transfer to his estate. 3. The insurance company pays the tax-free death benefit to Jackal Incorporated which is credited to its CDA. 4. Alfred pays Jack's estate for his 100 shares with a promissory note. 5. Jack's estate transfers the 100 shares to Alfred, who now owns all 200 shares, or 100% of Jackal Incorporated. 6. Alfred instructs Jackal Incorporated to pay him a tax-free capital dividend. 7. Alfred uses these funds to pay off the promissory note. 8.4.4.3 Funding Share Redemption by Sell Agreements In the case of a share redemption plan, the company and the shareholders are all parties to the buy-sell agreement. The company buys life insurance on all of the shareholders, naming itself as the beneficiary. When one of the owners dies, the company uses the death benefit to redeem the shares from the deceased shareholder's estate. Example, Kant Suppose that Jack and Alfred instead entered into a buy-sell agreement with Jackal Incorporated, structured as a share redemption plan, funded by insurance owned by Jackal Incorporated. When Jack died shortly thereafter, the overall process would look like this. 1. Jackal Incorporated pays the premiums for insurance on both Jack and Alfred. 2. Jack dies and his shares transfer to his estate. 3. The insurance company pays the tax-free death benefit to Jackal Incorporated, which is credited to its CDA. 4. Jackal Incorporated uses the funds to redeem the shares from Jack's estate, cancelling the said shares, reducing the number of shares outstanding to 100. 5. Alfred still owns the remaining 100 shares, which represents 100% of the company. Chapter 9. Application and Underwriting Competency Component Black Small Square Implement a Recommendation Adapted to the Client's Needs and Situation Competency Subcomponents Black Small Square Consider the Impact of Underwriting Criteria As they apply to the client's situation, Black Small Square confirm the requirements that must be met to implement the recommendation. Life Insurance Chapter 9 Application and Underwriting 164